Hello YouTube and welcome to Navisim 101, a brand new channel dedicated to all things to do with flight simulation. And that includes flight tutorials, software reviews, tutorials on P3D, and very soon the new Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So how exciting is that? Yes, indeed. I can't wait to get my hands on this eagerly awaited new flight sim platform. So for this very first video, I thought we could have a look at a software called Avlosoft Electronic Flight Bag version 2, or just EFB for short. Now this software is not new by any chance, and version 2 is still the latest as far as I know. There's been no new updates on that. Now, I've been using this software for quite some time and I found it to be an essential part of my flight sim setup. So EFB really is very much a resident part of my flight sim planning software. I never fly without it. More especially now that I'm flying regularly with VATSIM. More about VATSIM and how to join VATSIM, how to fly on VATSIM and how the online network is structured, etc. in upcoming tutorials. But having said that, IFB is very useful for VATSIM as well. So I'll show you a little bit later why. Now this tutorial is not going to be exhaustive. It's, it's not going to cover every single aspect about this amazing software. But hopefully it will be enough to give you a good working knowledge. I'm still learning new tips and tricks myself as I go along. So these tips and tricks I'll share with you. And uh, hopefully, if you know some good stuff about this software, you can share it with me in the comments below. So that'd be really great. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. And first thing we need to know about this software is that it's actually split into two parts. Now, one of the part is the servant and the client. That's the second part. It sounds like a good book, doesn't it? The server and the client. Um, but when you boot up these two software, then please make sure you run both of them as admin. So let's just have a look at the server. Now, when you load up the server, you'll see this screen here. It's got a lot of, lot of information that really we, we don't need if the software is running okay. But if it's not running okay, you'll see some error text down here, letting you know that it couldn't load a particular part of the software, whatever. So when the software is running okay, then it's fine. But if there's a problem, this can be really handy. Now, moving on to the database, this is where we want to start. Right, so that sound you heard is the server actually disconnecting. And now it's given us the database setup dialog. So that's my database already created. I'm going to create a new one. And just to let you know that when EFB requires an update, it will always ask you if you'd like to create a new database. You don't have to, but I think it's a good idea to do that. I always do it, so uh, yeah, I think it's a good idea to do it, but let's just create a new database for demonstration purposes. And click, when we click on that button, you can see you have a selection of flight sim platforms, X-Plane, which I don't use, I'm more of a prepared man myself, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator FSX, and Dovetail Games, etc. So we select here, version four, that's the one I'm using and then we click next and then it takes us to this page and it says select nav data provider then press finish now i'm actually using navigraph fms data okay um right so let me just show you how navigraph interacts with this software so i'll just try and get the navigraph data manager up for you okay 
So here's Navigraph, uh, really a handy piece of software, really. Um, once you install it, it scans all your software. And if you have EFB, that will be one of the software that it sees. So what you can see here is my EFB2. On the right, it's displayed in green, this little box here, which means that Navigraph has actually updated my ARAC, all right, and all the information I, I need in that file. So uh, if it wasn't updated, it would have a yellow box here, and I'd click the download arrow, and it would actually update that. So that's how Navigraph actually gets the information over to EFB. All right, so we'll go back to EFB. Okay. Now, you can see here where it's actually put the data. All right, so when we click finish, it will start going through this scanning routine it doesn't take that long considering the amount of files that it has to go through like you can see here 21,000 plus files but yet surprisingly it does it quite quickly so there isn't uh, much time uh, to wait for this to to do its thing so we'll just speed up the software and there you are it's actually finished and you can see here it stopped at like halfway and naught percent now don't be put off by that it's actually finished so it says database creation successfully finished and press close all right so we press close and we select Quit. Now it says data, quit database folder only or quit database builder and start EFB server. So we'll take the second option. And it's just restarting the server. Good. And we're back to this screen we started off with. Now we have a completely new database created, all updated and ready to go. So let's move on to the system tab and we'll click here. Now this is a traffic monitor and this is a handy feature for that sim. I don't really use this much because the software actually displays that sim aircraft. So yeah, it's, it's more information, I suppose, um, but I don't really use it. So we'll close that and we'll go back to system and we go to settings. Now, what we have here is the settings tab. That's what we want to click on right now. And you notice it says weather. So this is one of the things that EFB really does need is the weather. It can run without it. Okay, you don't have to have a weather generator, but when I say it really needs it, it, it works better with it, should I say. Now, of all the main weather generators, you have Active Sky, FS Global Weather, Explain, uh, FS Real, OpenFS, and Rex. So the one I have is Active Sky. Now you notice here, it's... Uh, into a particular folder or it's directed to a particular folder and EFB will go there and look for this file weather snapshot so how do we get that weather snapshot there well on active sky you as you can see here that's the Active Sky dialog. Um, if you go to options, now this might be similar in your software, I, I'm not sure, but 
in Active Sky, you'd go to Options, General Options, just click that one there, and go down to this line, which says Common Data Report Path. That's the line we need. The common data report path between A16, FSX, A16, P3D, where exported data for third party apps is to be placed. So this is where the software is going to place that weather snapshot text that we need. Now I've actually created a folder called ASP3D export folder. So if I click on that, I'll just move this box over to show you what happens. Common exported folder. Please select the folder that will be used as your common export folder in the next screen. So I'll click OK. And then it brings up this dialog. And basically, you would just go to the particular drive that you want to place place this file in. So you can see my one here. And you, know, you don't have to call it this. You can call it whatever you like. All it needs is a folder as to where to put this file. All right. So my file is actually there already. And that's it. That That is it as far as your weather generator is concerned. And this is what EFB is looking for. Okay, it will constantly go to this file to get the weather snapshot from your weather engine. Okay, so we're, we're done with this page, really. We'll get back to... So we're done with the weather generator. We'll get rid of that. And here we are. We just click OK, and that is that as far as the server is concerned. And so we close that, and you can pretty much leave the server and open up the client software, which is what we'll do right now.